Hi guys and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I made my Halo Spartan Air Assault helmet. So let's get started. This particular cosplay has been a very, very long time coming. Ever since I started cosplay, this was one of the cosplays that I was going to do at some point. I just sort of left it until now because I didn't know if I actually had the skills to make it. But now, <laughs> I think I do. <laughs> so this particular video will be part of a series. I'm currently working on the chest piece, the arm pieces, the leg pieces, everything else for this cosplay. But there's a lot of time going into those videos, so I thought I'd release it one part at a time, starting with the helmet. This helmet has been 3D printed and the visor I bought from a seller, which I will link in the description below. As with all of my 3D printed builds, you can make this out of foam if you don't have access to a 3D printer. However, this was a lot easier for me to do. <laughs> and I'm lazy, so. Overall, this project probably took about a month, but you could probably do it in a little over a week. And the total cost of this helmet was probably somewhere around $50 to $100 in filament and the visor material. But without further ado, let's just jump right into it. So the first thing you'll need to do if 3D printing is actually find your files. Now, I got all of these files from the 405th Infantry Division website. It has countless models from Halo and it is absolutely amazing if you are trying to make a Halo cosplay. This particular helmet was designed by Mo Sizlak on Thingiverse, and I will put a link in the description to both the 405th Infantry and this model on Thingiverse. But once I had the files I wanted, I put them into Prusa Slicer so that they could be sliced to be used by the 3D printer. During this process, I was focused on trying to minimize supports, but I was also trying to make sure the supports are mainly on the inside of the pieces, so there's less cleanup later. And if a print failed halfway through, this wasn't a problem because Prusa Slicer has capabilities to actually cut your pieces in half so that you can just finish printing the rest of the print. However, I did encounter a major error while printing these and woe to any other owners of an artillery Sidewinder X1 V4. But let me show you what the problem was and how I fixed it. Don't mind my hair, I just got out of the shower, but my printer broke part that connects uh, to the heatsink is a really problematic area on the artillery sidewinder uh, X1 V4. The sheath is prone to bending so sharply that it can actually shear the wires and that's what happened to mine. <laughs> I tried soldering the break I could see but it still didn't fix it so I'm just going to replace the wires completely because it seems to be that there's multiple breaks but they just haven't broken through the wire sheath so I can't see them. Hopefully that works and then we can get back to printing the rest of these parts. If you have the capability to do so I highly recommend that you add something to the sheath so that it's going to curve instead of bend sharply and shear the wires. But let's continue printing. This was my first try on the helmet and I was so excited. Everything was fitting perfectly. It looked amazing. It was coming together. So at this point, I thought I would try to start sticking all the pieces together. Uh, for this, I was using super glue, but I found I couldn't really get enough contact with the pieces. The bond just wasn't strong enough for me. And considering this helmet was likely to get banged up during conventions and such like that, I needed something a lot stronger. But you can see how the pieces were starting to come together at this stage regardless. So funnily enough, it was actually TikTok that taught me another technique I could use to bond these pieces together. And that was by using a burner of some sort. So all you have to do is actually melt the plastic together on the inside and outside of the pieces and this provides a really strong bond. You can also use uh, leftover scraps from supports and even just your filament that you'd usually put into a printer to fill any wider gaps. It made the process a billion times faster and easier and I will definitely be using this for every single 
3D printed build in the future. But of course, because we are dealing with fumes, make sure you do this in a well ventilated area and use your PPE gear. It's just so satisfying, oh my god. So I've been trying to work out how I can actually, you know, put this all together and fit my head in it still. I was looking at hinges and latches and all these sort of mechanisms and then I remembered that this is made out of a plastic that can be shaped when heated. So I think I'm just going to weld all the parts together and then heat it up around the neck area and just sort of like manipulate it and pull it apart a little bit until I can fit my head in. I think that's actually gonna work. Hopefully. So we'll see how this goes. And here I've printed a temporary visor while I wait for the actual one to arrive. And just like that, I had all of the pieces printed. So how about we try this on for the first time? I actually ended up breaking the seal at the chin so that I could pull open the helmet a little bit to get it over my head. This seemed to work really well and it looks like it's part of the design rather than a massive gap in the center. This helmet was super roomy as well, so I had planned to add some little foam blocks in to make sure it was going to sit on my head properly all of the time. So here is a really good view of that seam down the front and how I can actually take it on and off by opening the helmet up. A PLA plastic is quite malleable when it's uh, been printed and especially in this thin state, so this worked really well for getting the helmet on and off without having to have like latches or opening areas. 
Now, adding the foam to the inside was a lot of trial and error. It was simply just me putting in some parts and testing to see whether it fit and stopped the helmet from rocking around in my head. But now, back to that fake visor I mentioned earlier. The visor I had coming in the mail was probably going to take another month or two, and I really wanted to do some test fits with the visor installed. So for this, I've just used a 3D printed part, and I'm drilling some holes in so that I can actually see through it. This is a very crude way of doing it, but you know, it did the job and it didn't look half bad either. And the visor itself was just kept in place with some little foam blocks so that it could be removed when needed. And this is what it looks like altogether. So the visor I gave a quick spray of some chrome spray paint but everything else was going to get a single once over with a black primer. And it was really starting to look good as it came together. I really like putting a primer on before sanding because I think then it's really easy to see which parts you've missed and which parts you've already done. But not only that, primer really helps fill in any minuscule gaps that the sanding is going to miss. Although sanding is my most hated part of any cosplay project, it's definitely well worth doing because you can get a really nice finish if you sand it properly. You can even make things look like metal without using metallic paints. And after sanding, I went in with another coat of primer just to fill in any gaps again. So I'm going to spend some time using some wood putty to just fill in some of these areas here that need a bit of work and the sanding wasn't really getting rid of. There are a lot of other things you can use instead of wood putty, but wood putty is easy, so that's what I use. Wood putty can be a bit finicky to use, but a lot of the time it is rather a cheap alternative to some other products. And it's a lot easier to find as well. So now that we've covered up the more annoying holes and uh, pockets in this particular piece, we're going to do some more sanding. Lucky for you guys, we can skip ahead on that whole sanding thing, but this is what it looked like afterwards. And again, another coat of black primer. But there was a slight problem that arose from this, and that is that the plastic and the wood filler actually looked different under the primer, so we're gonna go with some acrylic paint to give everything a very uniform finish. And now it's time for my favorite part, which is actually painting this piece. To do this, we're going to be using some acrylic paint in silver, and we'll also use some colors to add some details later on. But what I'm doing here is sort of trying to dry brush the silver onto the piece. Uh, and I kind of want it to look like burnished or scratched metal. And this seemed to do the job really, really well. We're trying to avoid using water here. We're just dabbing the paint straight on in a very light coat and building up. We're then going to go back in with a very fine brush and highlight any edges with acrylic paint. No dry brushing here, if possible, we're just going to put a layer on, which makes it look like the edges are really shining out. Sometimes dry brushing will achieve this on its own, but I like to make it really defined for these metal pieces. And now we're going to add some color and detail to this piece. To do this, I am actually looking at the Halo Master Chief Collection's uh, range of paint patterns that it has. And I believe this was chosen from a Halo 4 rendition of the Aerosol helmet. Of course, you can do whatever pattern you'd like. I just really like the look of this. And so that's what I went with.
Now I didn't actually get footage about installing the visor, but I'm just going to talk about it briefly here. The visor was a very thin acrylic sheet of material, it was sort of like paper in a way, and all I did was trim it to size and set it in exactly how I did with the uh, plastic visor, that was the fake one. But with the visor installed, this is the helmet finished. So how about I give you a sneak preview of what the rest of the armor is coming together as so far. This is directly from my TikTok and I hope you enjoy. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you're looking forward to seeing more of this cosplay in the future. I have won this cosplay already in its work in progress stages on Twitch and in my TikTok videos, both of which are under the username Vixen, and you can find them in the description below. But this was a super fun helmet to make and although it took forever, it was definitely well worth it and I'm looking forward to the full costume coming together. But guys, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye!